The Dallas Cowboys just signed the fastest RB in the NFL, so we're going to be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video, and if you want more Dallas Cowboys news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is Dallas Cowboys are looking to land a polarizing fast RB. Depending on where you look, you'll get some very different versions of how this year's running back class stacks up in the NFL draft. That's especially important for the Cowboys, who could very well be the first team to splurge on a running back on day two of the draft. Currently, with running back Tony Pollard having departed in free agency, the Cowboys' running back room is built around fourth-year career backup Rico Dowdle, who was re-signed last month. Projections around whom the Cowboys will select to fill the void vary widely, with Jonathan Brooks of Texas being the top option. Trey Benson and Blake Corum also get mentions. But Bleacher Report is zigging where others are zagging. They're seeing Notre Dame star Audric Estime as the choice for the Cowboys. As the site's Gary Davenport wrote in an article titled, 2024 NFL Draft, Best Landing Spots for Top RBs to Contribute as Rookies. Estime is a capable pass catcher and one of the better pass-protecting backs in this year's class. In other words, he possesses the skill set to be a three-down back or at the very least be the lead back in a committee attack. There isn't a team in the NFL with a bigger need in the backfield than Dallas, but to be sure, Estime is not a sure thing as an NFL prospect. Far from it. Bleacher Report has him ranked as the top running back in this year's class, and it is easy to see why. He is a big bruiser, a 5'11", 221-pound fireplug who can grind between the tackle a sort of anti-Pollard in a way. He would make a good tandem with Dowdle in that respect. But Pro Football Focus has Brooks as the top running back in this class, the number 56 player available in the draft. Estime is much, much lower than number 9 running back and 116th player in the class. Mel Kuyper of ESPN is a little more generous to Estime, ranking him number six among running backs behind Brooks, Tennessee's Jalen Wright, Benson, Corum, and Marshawn Lloyd of USC. One potential benefit of locking in on Estime is that the Cowboys could potentially wait to use a day three pick on him. But the issue there is that the Cowboys do not have a fourth round pick, having sent it to San Francisco in the deal for quarterback Trey Lance last summer. That means, barring a trade, the Cowboys pretty much need to get their running back in the third round, where they possess the number 87 pick. Estime's draft stock was severely knocked down by a poor showing in the 40-yard dash at the Combine when he posted a 4.71 time. A scouting report at the huddle noted, He's a bowling ball that can fit nicely into a backfield committee looking for early down help running the ball and breaking the goal line. His lack of speed is concerning at the NFL level and it could be a limitation. His 40-time rated in the bottom 4% of all running backs in Combine history. He later ran a 4.58 at the Notre Dame Pro Day, but a major plus with the NFL Combine is that all the players can be compared to each other in an objective environment. Estime did meet with the Cowboys during the Combine, he said, and CMAE away encouraged. I just like the energy the Cowboys had, Estime said. They are very energetic guys and had smiles on their faces. I'm a guy that is always smiling and they were smiling right back at me. They are a very football savvy team that knows a lot about football. I'm a guy who always wants to be informed. I feel like in that system I'll be able to learn every day and maximize my ability. The second story is the Dallas Cowboys could sign Ram center Brian Allen in free agency. The Dallas Cowboys are in need of a center. And while they could add one in the draft later this month, there may still be an option on the free agent market. Bleacher Report suggests that the team could look to sign Los Angeles Rams center Brian Allen to a one-year deal worth $3 million. The starting center of the Los Angeles Rams run to a Super Bowl in 2021, Brian Allen has faded in recent years, Bleacher Report writes. In 2022, he only played in five games because of knee and thumb injuries. Last season, he mustered just 34 snaps in five appearances after Coleman Shelton landed the starting nod at center. Still, Allen's resume is screaming bounce-back candidate. While the Dallas Cowboys may have a rookie in mind, Jackson Powers, Johnson looks appealing at number 24 overall, adding a player like the Michigan State product can reduce the make-or-break feel around the position. 
Allen, who turns 29 this season, deserves at least one more opportunity to anchor an offensive line. Allen, 28, would certainly be a risk for the Cowboys, but he's someone who could pay off. He has playoff experience, something any rookie wouldn't be able to provide, plus he might be cheaper than a first-round pick. It would also allow the Cowboys to go in a different direction to start their draft class, or they could pick someone who could sit behind Allen for this year before being thrust into the spotlight. Needless to say, the Cowboys' interior offensive line will be looking different soon, and it may be Allen leading the change. Dallas Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons is trying to become a jack-of-all-trades on the football field. Cowboys special teams coordinator John Fassel said on the Ross Tucker Football Podcast last week that Parsons has tried to convince the coach to let him join special teams as a kickoff returner. You know Micah? He has lobbied me in the past to just be the primary kickoff returner, Fassel said. I'm like, Micah? That's a question you've got to go a little further up than me on that one. But would I love to see him back there? Absolutely. Because he would be fantastic. He would catch it, and he'd run wild, and he'd probably get incredible yards. But that ain't going to happen. I'm aware of that. Fassel admitted that it'd be too risky to put the team's star pass rusher in this position, as he could easily be injured. He then offered an example of likely the only time Parsons would become a kickoff returner, but only as a secondary option. Micah has asked about being a primary kickoff returner. That hasn't been allowed yet. Probably not going to be allowed unless you say, hey, in the game, we're down by six and there's eight seconds left in the game and we got to score a touchdown and kickoff return to win it. Maybe we put Micah back there as a second returner, Fassel continued. It doesn't sound like Parsons will get to live out his dream of being a kick returner, but Cowboys fans are likely fine with that. As rumors of a potential holdout swirl around C.D. Lamb, the all-pro wide receiver doesn't appear bothered, concerned, or dismayed by his ongoing contract negotiations with the Dallas Cowboys. Quite the contrary, actually, as the reigning NFL receptions leader made clear in a brief conversation with TMZ Sports, who caught up with Lamb during some off-season travel. As far as how his 2024 has gone thus far, he says it's been fairly stress-free. Relaxing, chilling, working out, of course, said Lamb. That certainly doesn't sound like the tone of a player who is worried about his future with the Cowboys and the fact he was flashing his trademark ear-to-ear -ear grin provided more evidence. This week marks the beginning of voluntary OTAs for the Cowboys, with mandatory minicamp not scheduled to take place until June 4th to 6th. While it's unclear if he'll ultimately hold out to help hasten that endgame, what he said next leaves no room for interpretation and should provide a sigh of relief for anyone outside of the building wondering if he'll take the field in one of the most pivotal Cowboys seasons in recent memory. Winning. I'm looking forward to winning and being out there with my guys and making another run at this thing, he said, before circling back with his proclamation. Yeah, I'll be in Dallas. Lamb, a former first-round pick of the Cowboys in 2020, is set to enter the final year of his rookie deal come September, a fifth-year option that will pay him nearly $18 million unless a new deal is agreed upon before that time arrives. He's one of three high-priority extensions on the table for the Cowboys, alongside two other all-pro talents, namely quarterback Dak Prescott and linebacker Micah Parsons. The latter has proclaimed he's willing to wait for major traction in his talks because he wants Lamb and Prescott to secure their new extensions first. The third story is Dallas Cowboys' DeMarvian Overshone getting bigger in weight room for 2024 debut. The spine of the Dallas Cowboys' defense was supposed to be stronger in 2023 than past seasons thanks to an inflection of youth from the NFL draft. Instead, Linebacker DeMarvian Overshone tore his ACL in training camp and rookie defensive tackle Mozzie Smith fell short of his first-round expectations, struggling to make an impact in the run game and push the pocket on passing downs. Without much in the form of upgrades, the burden will be on Dallas's younger players to develop into legitimate contributors for a defense that crumbled down the stretch. America's team got some good news on that front before April's NFL draft. According to his Instagram story, Overshone has done more than just rehab his knee in recent months. Posting a picture of a scale, Overshone appears to be up to 234.85 pounds. While no one is mistaking him for a true run-stopping linebacker in the prototype of prior decades, the added weight is meaningful. Coming out of Texas at 229 pounds, Overshone's weight was in the 32nd percentile at the position. At the pictured weight, 
he'd enter the 54th percentile for linebackers. Defending the run was an issue for the second level of Dallas's defense, ranking last in success rate against it in 2023. The unit managed to limit explosives, opponents were able to consistently pound the rock, taking aim when attempting to burn clock and keeping the offense two-dimensional, effectively neutering an otherwise explosive pass rush. Part of those concerns were philosophical. The Cowboys were awfully thin at linebacker, and Overshone's frame would have added to that if he was healthy. Further, the team lost Leighton Vander Esch, its best run-stopping backer, to injury early in the year. His decision to step away from football made that loss permanent. Former Mike Zimmer protege Eric Kendricks is the Cowboys' lone outside signing, but won't patch up the holes in the unit. Overshone brings rare speed and burst for the position, though concerns over his frame and tenacity persist.